Hey everyone, welcome to this fourth episode of my learning shader series. In this episode, I'm showing you how I made the fish tank leak. Uh, you shoot wherever you want, it creates a hole. And if the water level is higher than the hole, the water will leak and the level will stabilize at the hole level, just how it would in real life. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. This was inspired by a recent video that showed this behavior in a old Splinter Cell game. The title was a bit provocative, no modern video game has this technology. I thought it was funny because this is not advanced at all and to show you how easy it is, I decided to recreate it myself. So the first thing I did was study how it works in the original clip. First, we have a fish tank that is full. When we shoot somewhere, uh, water starts leaking from that point and the level decreases steadily until it reaches the bullet impact point. Okay, so we know we have to be able to control the water level and get the collision point of the fish tank. This should not be too hard. First, I created a simple rectangle mesh called water. This is the mesh that I will shrink to represent the water level. I create a simple material with transparency and a light blue tint. This is my water material, this is cool, but I also want to apply my own shader to this water mesh and it seems that in Godot I can't have a shader affecting only the vertices of my mesh with a material affecting the colors. So I converted the material to a shader by clicking the dedicated button. That way I keep the look of the water and I can now write my own vertex shader. So in the vertex function, I'm going to affect the water height. To do that, I want to scale the vertices in the y direction based on a value. To control the water height, I'm creating a float uniform called water level that I will control outside of the shader. I put a hint range of 0 to 1 because UV goes from 0 to 1. To scale the vertices, I can simply put vertex.y times equal water level. It kind of does what I want, but as you can see, the mesh is scaling from the middle. Okay, so we need to do two things for it to work. First, we want to offset the mesh as we scale it. That way, the mesh will be at the bottom when the water level is zero and it will take all the space at one. I can simply subtract 0.5 to the position to achieve that, but because the scaling affects the middle of the mesh, when the water level is at one, our mesh is only half size. That's fine, we can get the size back by adding water level divided by two to our vertex. When we combine everything, we have a mesh that goes from 0 to 1. Perfect, we did half the job here. We can now control our water level. We now want to get the position of our shot and use it to control the water level. I decided to simply use the mouse to get a point on the mesh. To do that easily, I added an area with a collision shape with the same dimensions as the fish tank. Areas have a signal for GUI input, so if we connect the signal, we can get all sorts of inputs that happens on the area, such as mouse click, mouse movement, etc. Just a quick note here, if you want to do it just like we saw in the YouTube video, you can use a raycast and get the collision point of the raycast. Back to our problem, so with the area, we can get the click local position of the area. Now I will need to convert this position to something between 0 and 1 to control the water level. I tried to find a way to convert the 3D position to a UV coordinate inside the shader, but I couldn't find a way to do it. I'm sure it's possible, I just don't know how. So if you have a solution for that, please leave in the comments below. My solution feels a bit hacky, but it works, so I guess it's fine. I simply note the maximum and lowest position I can get by clicking on the top and bottom of the fish tank. I get 1.5 and 0.5. So I just remap those values to be between 0 and 1 and we can use them to control the water level. So to wrap things up, when I shoot somewhere, I get the local coordinates. I remap them from 0 to 1 and if the hit location is lower than the current water level, I use a twin to lower the level to the desired location. At the same time, I add a bullet hole to the location and turn on particle emissions for the water jet effect. To get a water jet somewhat realistic, I simply twin the initial velocity of the particles from 1 to 0 0.2. And that's it! You saw how simple it was to make something that is pretty close to the original video. Of course you can tweak a lot of parameters to make it more realistic. You can slap a better water shader, add some movements to the water and even calculate what the pressure should be based on how high the water is to create a more realistic water jet. But I leave all of that to you. 
Guys, I hope you liked this video. I'm still learning shaders, so if you have suggestions on how to make it better, please tell me in the comments below. I'm currently working on Dashpong, a local multiplayer game full of energy. If you're interested, you can wish this now on Steam or watch my devlogs about it. If you want to see more, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or join the Discord. That's it for self-promo. I'll see you later, and in the meantime, have a great day. Bye! Thank you.